Now, the first option, send outgoing mail via host, allows us to specify an external SMTP server to use for mail delivery. Uh, if you're not sending a lot of mail and your hosting provider allows you to use their central SMTP server, or possibly if you want to use GoDaddy's SMTP service, you can set that up here by setting the, the host name of the SMTP server that you want to use uh, here in this box. But for us, we are going to deliver directly, um, which, is going to, which means that our mail server is going to attempt to deliver mail directly to the recipient's mail server. The second and third options uh, forward unqualified usernames to host and forward mail for local users to host um, are, can also be left blank. Uh, they're really only useful when you're accepting incoming mail. Uh, and while you might ha you have a situation where you might have many servers, physical servers, sending outgoing mail, uh, but you only have one single server uh, with incoming mail. Uh, so if that's the case, and this is one of those outgoing servers, uh, you might want to configure um, the the server name of the of the one machine that's accepting incoming mail uh, here in the second and third uh, field. Uh, delivery mode and sort mail queue can also be left to the default values. Uh, usually your distribution will have customized these to whatever it works best with the, the distribution. Um, the next field, SMTP port options, is of specific interest to us because it dictates how the SMTP server is going to listen for connections. Now, what we're going to do is rather than setting up complex rules to check where the mail is generated from and to decide whether or not to deliver or relay the mail based on that, uh, which is normally how we control spam, we just we analyze where the mail is coming from, if who logged in and as what user, and we decide whether we're going to allow that mail to be sent through our server. Uh, so rather than doing that, we're just going to tell the SMTP server to listen only on 127.0.0.1, which is localhost and therefore only accessible from the local machine. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and let it relay all mail. So in this case, we can see that it's already set up family equals inet, uh, port equals SMTP address is 127.0.0.1. Uh, and then finally, there's a second port, which you may or may not have configured based on uh, your distribution. I know Red Hat-based uh, distributions don't always use this by default, uh, which is submission uh, port, which is uh, a slightly different port uh, used only for, for local mail submission. Uh, what's important is to make sure that any line that starts with family equals INET also has the ADDR equals 127.0.0.1 to ensure that we only bind to the local host address. Uh, moving along, the next two fields, uh, max load average for sending and max load average for receiving, can be used to throttle the SMTP server's use in high load situations. Uh, normally, this shouldn't be an issue. And if it is, you should consider getting separate physical machines for the various services you run before you start fiddling and throttling here. Uh, max child processes define the maximum running process for processing mail that can run simultaneously. Uh, zero is unlimited. I don't like letting things go unlimited if they don't have to. Uh, I found that 20 should be fine for a very low load mail server, and you could safely raise this if you feel you need it. Uh, max connections per second specifies the maximum speed which mail, the mail server can connect to outside servers in which local scripts and other sources can connect inside to our mail server. Uh, 15 is normally a good value for this. Um, the only other real field of interest on this page uh, is the send error messages to over here. Uh, normally, every mail server will have a local postmaster email account uh, the mail server will usually send all problem reports to this address. If you aren't hosting your own incoming mail, and which you probably aren't, and you want to be notified when problems occurred, such as bouncing or refused email messages, you could set this to a forwarding address will which will receive these messages. Um, in this case, I'll specify it's postmaster at mybrandnewdomain.com to receive these alerts. Uh, once everything is set up on the screen, we could just go to the bottom and click Save on Apply. 
uh, and that'll apply the changes to the running mail server. Uh, and that's really it. Um, the rest of the subscreens that you see here, mail alias, local domain, et cetera, deal primarily with incoming mail and relaying rules, neither of which interest us. Uh, the former because we're not doing incoming mail, and the latter because we're not re we don't have to worry about relaying rules because we're allowing anyone to relay since we're only listening on the local um, the local host address. Uh, we can test this setup by creating a simple CGI or PHP script which will send mail to us. Um, so what we covered today was how to set up an incoming, uh, sorry, an outgoing only email server. Uh, we set up send mail, uh, and we talked about the other options. Um, what we did not go into, uh, some other important things are uh, antivirus um, and anti-spam uh, measures, which are very important. Uh, we also didn't talk about how to set up DNS, the MX records, which uh, when we talked about uh, DNS, we promised we'd talk about MX records, um, which are specific to incoming uh, email. Um, and uh, if you want more information about that, I highly encourage you to get a copy of the Dedicated Servers Handbook uh, at www.thededicatedservershandbook.com. Uh, and we'll discuss those topics in a bit more detail. Uh, and on the subject of DNS, um, at this point, uh, as we're drawing to the to the end of this series, I'd actually like to invite you to get a sneak preview of the dedicated server's handbook. Uh, we have a free chapter available, just the DNS chapter, but the full chapter from the the the, the full dedicated service handbook. Uh, and you can get a copy of that if you agree to do two things. Number one, we ask you to tell three friends about this free video series. Uh, and number two, after you download your free chapter, we ask you to get back in touch with us um, through our website at www.cheapdedicatedservers.biz. Uh, either through the support, uh, the uh, contact us page, or through the live chat if we're online, uh, and give us your comments on the the free chapter that you read. Uh, and we will have a special bonus for people who do send us uh, comments and testimonials about that. So I highly encourage you to do that. If you want to get your free copy of that series, follow the URL that's now showing up on your screen, uh, and you can get your free chapter from there. Uh, so that's it for today. Next time we're going to talk about how to set up um, website uh, web statistics analysis, uh, analyzing the hits that uh, that show up on the web server. Uh, until then, this is Isaac, and have a great day.